Jews have a very bad reputation um, as, as being the baddies of the bush. And because of this, they are heavily persecuted. However, they have an extremely important role in the whole ecosystem. Well, the brown hyena is an extremely special species. Um, it's highly cryptic and nocturnal and secretive. And um, in South Africa especially, people know very little about them, sort of where they go, their distribution, their density. And this type of information is really vital in terms of understanding the species. And, and then we can move forward in terms of the conservation. The IUCN red list status is near threatened. Um, the, the last uh, official figure was that there was 1,700 remaining in South Africa and then between 5 to 8,000 remaining sort of within its Southern African range. This is our fifth Earth Watch project and to be honest, we basically spend a lot of time during the year either talking about our previous Earthwatch projects or talking about which one we're going to go on next. As we do use spotlighting for monitoring. Uh, we still use spotlighting to look at density of prey. Um, and we also record everything we see. So we record jackals and leopards. We record... The objective of Monkwe is to establish a research centre to accommodate university groups and research groups like Earthwatch. Um, so to develop the education side rather than the tourist side. So that's one of the reasons why we're doing this, is to try and get accurate population densities. The Brown Unit project was started five years ago by Richard Yarnell. And we actually had no idea how many we had at Monkwe. And when we spoke to the Peelandsburg management, they had no idea how many they had in Peelandsburg. And so that's where the whole project started. Earthwatch has been fantastic for Monkwe Wildlife Reserve itself because we are a self-sustaining reserve. We get no money from the government or anything. And so just um, having the involvement helps sustain the reserve itself. As far as the project goes, it provides us with skilled volunteers that can assist with the um, data collection and we've also managed to build up the scientific equipment that we need to do the research. So without Earthwatch involvement, um, this project would be impossible to do. This is what a, a hyena scat looks like. Um, or this is a, a quite a typical place that a hyena would um, come and defecate on a, a junction of a road, which is a possible intersection of, of his territory. Well, the research is about uh, whether or not the, the brown hyenas are um, increasing or decreasing in population and generally studying their, um, their habitat and uh, their predators and it's mainly done through figuring out the density, the population density of the hyenas and that data over time gets inputted and, and hopefully a picture will emerge. The spotlighting is going out at night in vehicles, scanning the area with a large spotlight and then when you pick up animal shapes or the, the reflex of, of the light in the eyes, you stop and you try to identify the animal. Spotlighting is really used for looking at prey availability um, and looking at um, other carnival competitors for the brown hyena. We, in fact on my team C, we have the luxury of three different sightings of the brown hyena, which we were able to follow in the night spottings, the spotlighting, for quite a ways. Watch them pasting as they do, marking their territory. Uh, the brown hyenas are solitary, whereas the uh, spotted hyena move around in packs. So the spotted hyena do, in fact, uh, make quite a few kills and people kind of put all hyenas in the same bracket and therefore the spotted hyena's bad image is worn off on the, on the brown hyenas. But because they forage on their own, it's very unlikely that they would actually make a kill. Just like you. And they need food just like you. 
and they need a shelter or a We had den. a visit from school children who were, there was one group um, aged 12 and another group aged about 18, so quite different. And so we had a, a chat amongst the volunteers because we all really wanted to be involved in, in that and make it a great day for them. The objective is that they went away not only having fun, most importantly, but also understood a bit more about the project, the wildlife that's on their doorstep. Talk, 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 talk to each other. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Now understanding the sort of research that has to be done here, so the spotlighting um, surveys and the latrine surveys, it takes a heck of a lot of manpower and I don't believe that, that there would be sufficient manpower here if you didn't have Earthwatch volunteers. Two, two, six, two. I think the team as a whole contributes a lot to the research. So what we're doing is maybe just one small piece, but they've been fantastic about explaining what we're doing and how it fits into the bigger picture. Yeah, that should be fine. This gives us um, exposure to a, a whole other uh, community of people with vast knowledge and, and because they're so willing to, to share that knowledge with us, it, it makes it really exciting. We feel like we're learning things that we otherwise wouldn't be able to learn. And I think we feel like we're getting to really contribute a lot to progressing their, their projects forward. I, I think uh, we really do feel like, at least on the projects that we've been involved in, that we really get to help them collect critical data. I really love the way that the volunteers truly are not just entertained, but really an integral part of the project, and so I really feel that I am making a contribution. We want to take what we've learned from these two sites and take it nationwide if we can. Uh, we have got PhD students on board and they're now going to start surveying in different provinces of South Africa. We also want to do a lot more community-based uh, work and get more involved with the schools, the farmers, and hopefully um, find a way to work with them to preserve the brown hyena for the future. Thank you.